one by one and we go ahead of each other to actually try to catch some fish to the point daniel uh, disappeared behind the behind the tip of a rock and obviously like uh, i start you know kind of going the same direction uh, to eventually then uh, listen uh, to danny saying hey don't have a mache <laughs> and i'm like and i'm like uh, Wait a second, did you actually tell me that? Daniel, when you did the move to the UK, you were an electrician. So how this transition happened from being an electrician and now being a cinematographer? She followed me here, even though she didn't like here. Sure. Okay? What about uh, you? Was there something you didn't like in Australia? You follow your wife because it's your wife. You, you wanted to support her. How did it go, everything? I, I think for her work, there's definitely a lot more work here. She's an interior designer, so it's okay. The, the, the you know the the opportunities here are just way better. Um, yeah. And I was just happy to you know I guess do something out of my comfort zone. Daniel Mann, Mika, what a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. How are you doing? Thank <sighs> uh, but uh... okay. Bene. <laughs> Bene. Okay, what have you been up to? What have you been doing? Uh, I have had a lovely weekend away. The ah, midweek staycation in the Cotswolds with Hannah. Uh, okay. A couple of days. She finished a big project at work. So, um, yeah, we just went and stayed at a nice big manor, the sauna, the spa. Okay. The restaurant. Food. Yeah, yeah. Food. Yeah. What, just what type food. of food uh, did you have? Uh, I had, uh, I don't know, Tagliloni, Tagliloni, the small uh, Tagliatelle. Okay. It's I like, mean, a, it's like very thin spaghetti. Okay. How did you say it? How did you call it? Uh, Tagliatelle. Lilon, Tagliatelle. No, that's... Uh, Tagliolini, Tagliolini, okay. Tagliolini, sorry. Tagliolini, okay, we got it, we got it, nice, nice. Uh, with um, with lobster, which was uh, very good. Good. Was that, did you, was it fresher? Was it a right lobster for your taste? It, it was the best lobster I think I've ever had at a restaurant because it was only just, just cooked. So still, you know, that, that point where it goes from raw to cooked. Yeah. To just there. Nice. So very very nice. delicious. I mean, I've realized for many years of my life, um, I've been cooking gambari like too much prawns. Just okay. I, I, I've overcooked them. And so I've made an effort in the last six months not to do that. Um, All right. It just ruins the prawns. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you if you catch it, if you know it's fresh, uh, if you know the you know the shop and uh, you know all the stuff around it, uh, um, I would personally give it a go with no issue. But when uh, we're talking about uh, food in restaurants or like you know in big places, um, I tend to kind of uh, by working in the kitchen, uh, you know, I tend to uh, avoid uh, to have like fish raw unless uh, I know it. But oh, I see. Like, Definitely, like um, prawns particularly. I, I see like a lot of these trends on Instagram is they have the uh, gambari rossi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gambari rossi? Gambari rossi, yeah. Yeah, okay, gambari rossi, the, the red prawns. And, you know, they, they cook them down and they chop yeah, up yeah. The, the meat and they put it on the top uh, of the spaghetti yeah. with some lime oh, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. But I just think, I don't know, you know, you know as well as me, you, you're not going to eat raw prawns from Waitrose, like, yeah yeah no and uh, and Some i went people to do <laughs> i don't know i just i mean i don't know enough about food safety and that sort of thing but i just think if you're going to eat something raw particularly crustaceans they are quite delicate you know you want to make yeah, sure that yeah. it's very fresh but um prawns i don't know just raw is it better raw I don't know. I mean, depending depending what prawns. Like, uh, if you try the rosso di mazzara, people, uh, fucking, uh, nah. Like, um, you you realize that what a prawn tastes like. And I had the color and the size. Like, I had a, a small taste of this in um, Salento, not Puglia, as people have told okay. me many a times. Uh, Salento. Okay. Uh, Hannah had it uh, on on some spaghetti, um, right? At a restaurant, right. and they had the little raw bit on the top um it was very nice i mean i guess they get the, the prawns there somewhere in the mediterranean they come from somewhere don't they 
Yeah, yeah. And, but as you know, to try them properly, you got to come to Sicily and then come to Mazzara del Vallo, which is always such a beautiful place of Italy, like Long Beach, it's wildness. Uh, I remember I've been with my wife uh, in a, you know, very isolated uh, beach that was uh, the only way to get through this was uh, to go through a vineyard. Okay. And so you driving in the middle of all these grapes and then you get to this side of um, Sicily, which uh, guys, uh, I can it's literally amazing Mazzara del Vallo and all the surrounding areas um Daniel so I know you through YouTube uh, and um uh, we've been lucky enough to actually catch up uh, and uh, several times uh, several you. times yeah yeah and uh Mio Mico. It was amazing Ooh, Amico like, Mico. Amico? guys uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm like uh, a super fan since Daniel uh, since when uh, he came out uh, with the Brighton uh, whole hunting spigola uh, video. Fucking uh, that was, that that gave me hope uh, because I almost moved uh, in UK. You know that that time I was like, yeah. uh, I want to meet this guy, and we did. Um, and uh, like, um, okay, uh, I know you through YouTube, but I had a feeling of um, what you did uh, in in life. But I want to know more about it. Um, you said you're from uh, Brisbane. I was Brisbane, like yes. back, uh, back there. Uh, Brisbane's very comfortable, um, but I guess most people would say that about their, their hometown because it's very familiar. You know how things operate. Um, yeah. As, as you know, moving to a different country. And we love that. We love <laughs> yeah. That. It's, uh, uh, you know, just things work differently um, in different places. And when you're, you know, very familiar, I guess it's like, you know, for you speaking Italian, it's just, you don't have to think it just works you oh, don't yeah. Yeah. you know you know what i mean it's just it's uh that natural feeling and brisbane's lovely i mean i can't say that it, it's um you know a bad place to live but when i was there it gets to the point of you know people i go and i'm not i love i love my friends but a lot of my friends we went to school together they met their partner together they get married and they they have kids in the same town and their kids go to the same school um which is great. There's a lot to be said for that, um, I guess, more simple style of life. But um, yeah. Yeah. it, um, I guess it doesn't simple, really. Uh, simple, simple, above. Okay, say so simple, uh, could be, could be. Well, uh, yeah, okay, sure. Like having kids is probably not a simple thing. But, you know, like the, it's you, you've got a lot of familiarity, familiar, familiarity, apparently I speak English, familiarity <laughs> about, you um, your, your life you've got a lot of certainty you know, certainty you know how things work uh you've probably yeah. got a lot of support from family friends and that sort of thing so it's um yeah it's it's a it's a nice it's definitely a nice way to live and i've uh, contemplated okay. uh trying to attempt that myself but yeah it's just um and then yeah yeah then um Eventually, I, I, I mean the, the, the spear fishing is great there there's there's lots of fish um as you may have seen some videos we, we, know, we know that we know yeah. that what happened so you were living in brisbane uh yes and then uh, uk where did this come from well my wife uh my wife's sister so my sister-in-law she lived, moved to london with her husband in 2012 and then so i got married in 2013 and then 2014 we went to the uk uh for a holiday just to you know see your sister see london we'd okay. never been um, okay. the only other international trip we'd done together um well that's not true but like we hadn't done a lot of international trips we've been to indonesia japan um and yeah we thought, oh, cool holiday so we went to barcelona amsterdam paris just the usual sort of i guess yeah, yeah. touristy yeah. things three weeks um and yeah, and then we said, oh, you know, maybe we should try living there. And I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> um, but uh, funnily enough, uh, both our uh, Hannah and I's mothers were born in Sheffield in the north of England. Okay. Um, so we you just have to get their birth certificate and you send off the birth, original birth certificate and your birth certificate to London. And three weeks later, hundred pounds you have a brand new european U union um uk passport life's good and so yeah so then we both got our passports in early 2015 and we thought we just said oh if we can get our passports we'll move and you know just try it for a year and so 
a year is okay uh, yeah is it uh un anno un anno un anno oh, no? was it a I long bet. year was uh, it a long year or well i'm an elect uh by trade an electrician so in australia that's basically a license to print money it's okay the, um it's one of the uh, that and plumbing in australia i mean you can earn a disgusting amount of money being an electrician it, it's probably the only country i know of that electricians earn more than lawyers um, wow for the, for the same amount of experience um yeah i mean you can yeah i think the last job i left was like for one month so you work you fly to an island one month you stay you don't work sundays because they don't want to pay you the overtime and you make eighteen thousand gross um for 28 days um and you don't How have to pay hours? Thing. uh How many hours today uh 10 10 hours monday to friday eight hours on saturday and that's it uh, but you know you can't go anywhere and do anything um, true so True, it's a but... bit it's, it's a bit boring but like you know there's a gym and um you know there's a uh there's a gym Stuff they, they, yeah. yeah they pay for all your food as well um so you know you, you see the guys in the gym there and they're massive and they just wow. eat, eat, eat like a plate of broccoli or steak or something and it's all free so they and can just... what about cost of life uh, in brisbane because that's a lot of money is it yeah but you've been living there uh some things are expensive but you earn a lot more money compared to what you have to spend on on okay money so say if i give me an example of something that is expensive or just to uh, like uh, a coffee at the bar uh, uh, okay, in Italy, okay it's like a two euro here it's four quid yeah um, there so i think maybe like five like if you five or six dollars so uh roughly speaking like very roughly like yeah um, one dollar uh two dollars is Let's find out. Let's actually make this. Yeah, uh, let, yeah. Factual. Let's be clear. Uh, yeah. um, one euro uh, AUD to a euro. Um, okay, so one dollar is six, sixty euro cents. So it's like five, okay. six dollars. So like maybe three euro sixty or something like that. So not crazy. Doesn't sound so bad okay. now actually. Um, but I just think um, oh, you know, like I, I guess it is probably a bit cheaper meat and that sort of stuff you can get a whole eye fillet steak one kilo 26 dollars okay. uh which is maybe you know like 15 euros or something like that so uh, it, it, it's a good combo like uh it's a uh, livable if that is yeah it is you, you earn a lot of money though but i don't think there's there's no not a lot of class segregation okay. like you have in the uk so you know if somebody okay the, you know in the uk if you earn um say you know Twenty-five thousand pounds. Um, you've got a certain standard of living. You may not be able to afford a car. You're probably renting. Yeah. If you earn sixty thousand pounds, you've probably got a car. You probably live a bit in a nicer place. Yeah. You may have got a yeah. mortgage. If you earn one hundred and fifty thousand pounds, you know, you're having a really nice life. You know, you're going to ski. Yeah. You're going to Sicily yeah, for yeah. holidays and that sort of thing. But in Australia, if you earn fifty thousand dollars, everyone's got a house. Probably renting. Um, if they're a young person, they've got a car. They go to work um okay uh if you're on a hundred thousand you do the same thing it's just that your house might be bigger or your car might be bigger or nicer or newer um so i think in australia you have a lot of extra income so the 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 percentage of money that you spend on housing like renting um or, or your mortgage is a lot less than what you do yep. in the uk so i think here you know the average person spends 50 percent of their income on rent or mortgage and that sort yeah, of stuff yeah, so it's, yeah, it's probably yeah. i mean they're probably more like 20 just today i paid the child uh, the kids um, uh, nursery and oh. came up to a thousand and nine hundred and fifty pound for the month a thousand nine hundred and fifty yeah for the month yeah that's a nice that's a nice wage for uh, for three days a week monday thursday and friday and um thank you is, uh, <laughs> mean cafe is expensive. <laughs> it is expensive so okay what, what, so, what's the point what's the point of working though like because because you know you may well, as well yeah 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 but we look at it we tend to look at it uh, that you know kids are socializing they're knowing other people they're speaking the language they're having a social life and so I get it. I get it. Uh, well, um, for us it was a uh, kind of very challenging because coming from a place in Sicily where you grew up with, you know, uh, mom, dad, uh, non, and non, madre, non. Madre. 
madre padre no, non nel nonno no. so you you don't need to have this type of services to use them yeah um uh, if you want to use them we did inquire back when we were thinking to move back to sicily and it did only cost uh, 15 euro a day for a kid and you're like fuck but you know uh yeah it's uh it's a very strange country. place that we uh that we live so in. you you like you left this country that you know it could have uh it could have um it could have give you like we're saying uh, a decent life uh, it, it's you... it's it, uh, there is uh, i'm not trying to complain about australia in any way no but, no no but um, i want to ask it, you what you didn't it, like about uh, because uh, uh, or I, I th- if there's wait, 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 wait. let me mm-hmm. let me put text. you if i look up my wife example she loved me so much she followed me here even though she didn't like here sure. okay what about uh, you was there something you didn't like in australia you follow your wife because it's your wife uh, you you wanted to support her how did it go everything I, i think for her work there's definitely a lot more work here she's an interior designer so it's okay the, the, the you know the the opportunities here are just way better um yeah. and i was just happy to you know i guess do something out of my comfort zone i mean i like um nice i used to i used to have very very uh heavy anxiety about um just any sort of traveling i mean like sometimes i would on the way to a dive i'd be like throwing up out the side of a car window like i'd be, I'd be so anxious about you know, just okay. something new or something i don't know or um yeah and it's obviously um fast forward a long time generally i've may- maybe overcome that a little bit i still you know i still have the odd day where i'm like oh, i'm a bit nervous you know i guess that's more excitement i, I think i've I haven't learned the line between excitement and you know being yeah, unnecessarily yeah, yeah. anxious about things um But yeah, so I followed Hannah over here and I thought we'd be here for six months. And, and then we moved over in uh, December, which is not a great time to move to the UK. And yeah, we both got jobs after a couple of months, but um, I think it took me till February uh, to get a job. Um, okay. February, February to get a job. Um, but in then I just, I was making YouTube videos because I was making some videos in Australia for a spearfishing magazine and it was very basic sort of just you know here's a music track here's some kill shots um, yeah, yeah putting on a dvd on but you know this is 2015 in 2014 this is a long time ago and then i just kind of in that little small window i i wanted to make some youtube videos because i was involved in an online sort of okay. net, someone trying to make a netflix of of spearfishing but it was just too early like it just wasn't okay. gonna it didn't have it just wasn't going to work so i thought I've got so much cool stuff that I filmed over the years and I might as well just make some YouTube videos. And so I did that for a little bit. Um, and then I was working as an electrician for a while um, in the UK, which is, okay. I don't, don't recommend it. It's not fun. Okay. Um, so overall, uh, how are you feeling uh, living in the UK, coming back from such <laughs> a you know different country? Uh, things, I really like the proximity to Europe in, in the UK. I think it's really good to get the experience of other people's lives and how they live and yeah australia being a massive island you have no neighboring countries um you share no borders with anyone which is you know for europeans you're like yeah you know, that doesn't make sense i mean if you're a big island in europe you get attacked you know sardinia of course uh, um malta they're, they're, if you, or cyprus you know they, they all get if you're an island you're in trouble um so but yeah. australia is so far from everything so you know you do we do have a lot of um uh migrants in, in australia i mean particularly in the, the 50s and 60s and 70s a lot of uh people came from italy greece lebanon uh into the southern parts of australia particularly around sydney so they have a massive um mediterranean sort of uh community there um okay that's cool uh, i actually, actually know one diver who was on the australian team for worlds in 2016 um uh emmanuel bova and he was telling me when he moved to australia when he was 15 didn't speak a single word of english which i thought man that's tough like in i think it was in the yeah. 70s or 80s but i thought that'd be pretty tough to go oh, yeah yeah so um but you know he's he loves it um But obviously, you know, like you say, you know, you, there's always a little part of you that misses the homeland um, a little bit. And I guess, you know, it's always that that grass is greener sort of thing. You know, you always think that it's something's better out there. But, yeah. Um, yeah. But the UK has been constantly. constantly. Yeah. You see people back home doing this, doing that. You're like, oh, that'd be nice. But then also 
Yeah, I feel UK is such a good place because um, you know at the end of the day, this business you work, uh, you you can travel, uh, you can yeah. go around uh, li like uh, like you do. Which one of the European country kind of uh, you know stays in your heart uh, more than? Uh, uh, I, th I think uh, I think I really resonate uh, with the Italian culture. I think there's a level of refinement, but also quite relaxed um at the same time that is quite um i think there's something in that you know like that you, you're very particular about something that's very simple um is is my observation whether this you agree with that or not i mean for instance catch you a pepe come on it's very simple but you know what you have to do it the right way to make it properly otherwise it splits it's uh you know it just doesn't it doesn't work and um it's a very simple well, why, why, why do you resonate with the Italian community? Well, have you ever done like well, a DNA check or stuff? I, 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 don't, I don't think so. Uh, maybe uh, you're like, uh, you know, a, a fair Italian. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. It's just uh, like, you know, the food's good. I, I like the the culture of, um, uh, you know, it's like very big family sort of thing, which I yeah, guess yeah. My, myself, I'm not. Oh, God. Uh, I'm not that um i'm not that close with my immediate family that i you know obviously they're my family but it's not like i i have a dependency yeah, um, yeah, on, yeah. My, on my family like you know some people are like oh you know i can't survive without my family or you know like I in, 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 so in um, experiencing that uh, it's you know like of, uh, you know like fast and furious where it's like family is everything to dominic <laughs> um for me, like, you know, family is definitely an important factor, but I would more say, you know, my immediate family of my wife is is more important. And, um, yeah, so and I don't think I... about think about one thing, then we you, you perceive that uh, by having Italian friends. Think how strong we feel family, the word family in our family ourselves. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, that is uh, such a big thing. We always say family. We are very attached for family. Like, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I think that, I mean, like food in Italy is great. I, I, I really think uh, from particularly where I come from, Italian food is extremely overcomplicated. Uh, okay. You know, it's just like that, okay. I guess, westernized, um, um, you know, Americanized and Australianized sort of um italian food etc yeah, it's, yeah. it's not it's not simple it's not nice well i mean it's it's food at the end of the day but it's not yeah it's not the uh, it's look, it's look, in look, a different look. place like uh, anywhere else um, in, in the world like uh, if you there are just a few places uh, actually abroad that they do good italian food um most of um, the other competitors and restaurants are just um you know italian kind of uh Themed. Yeah, Americanized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. An Italian you know, like, pie, but... like Domino's pizza is. It's, it's, it's okay. It's a pizza, but it's not Italian. It's uh, and and uh, and by by working in the industry and as Italian, uh, I can literally explain how you feel when uh, you see like all the Italian branding, like uh, your expectations goes like uh, above the above the star. You you know kind of uh, get into the place uh, and. Uh, there's only the design of the Italian yeah. place, and, uh, and and it's weird, uh, but I get it. It does sell. Yeah, yeah, I think I think yeah, particularly in Australia because you you are so far from Italy. I think it's easy to sell something that's not very authentic yeah. um, in that way. Uh, for me, so you know, Italian restaurant. I just, geez, I don't know if there's any Italian restaurant. Actually, I did go to an Italian restaurant a couple years ago in Brisbane uh, when I was there, 2022 um i forgot what it was called like i don't know some... something italian there for sure uh not solo mio no not this but uh <laughs> you know uh it's something more like uh you know um, ah moscone sorry moscone if anyone from who's ever worked at moscone okay. but um they came in and uh you know talking about the specials and they're like oh we have a you know like a a, a pork tagliatelle and i was like oh god you didn't just say that i mean you're an <laughs> italian it. restaurant and i was like i'll have the tagliatelle please i mean i, I mean you, know, you can't pronounce everything um you know the correct Australia, uh, italian accent or something but you know you can yeah you, know, you, you, yeah. you don't go around saying fox fur when it's faux fur for you know like 
you know French. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, you, yeah. Just, I don't know. You, you missed that, and I thought for seemingly the top Italian restaurant in a major capital city. You know, I just thought, oh gosh. Um, okay. Anyway, but you know, it's fine. And and like I've discussed with you many times about um, Italian. Uh, even if I get the grammar wrong or the pronunciation, you can still understand what I'm saying. So does it yeah, actually matter? Yeah. Prob- probably not. Um, but yeah, I, I think. Uh, I yeah, yeah. So. I mean, it's, I, I just so I think like they put a big emphasis on enjoying life and making time for the sun, uh, which I think that's really what important. we sell abroad, uh, guys. Uh, this is what you know the market is selling you out there. Uh, but we go a tough life in Italy. It's not all like Parmesan, sunshine, reggae, and uh, no. I don't know what else. Like uh, we, I mean, we're this, literally struggling there. Yeah, I mean, particularly the southern parts that I've seen, like in in Sicily when when we were there together. You know, it's not uh, you know it's not a postcard all the time. Um, yeah, except, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Like, not every, not like, everything's Positano, is it? At all. Like, uh, well, most of the most of the time during the year, uh, when, but it, it's challenging. There's no work. There's no. There, there are no rights for workers. Uh, you could yeah. you work for cash most of the time if you are uh, on, on the level of market. You know, like in working in shops or restaurants, uh, yeah. and, and people that study uh, most of the time. Uh, you know, they, they don't get a job. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember my first work experience was in a call center where like 90% of people was uh, people with degree and uh, working for like 500 euro a month, working like six hours a day. So um, it's tough. Uh, but to um, help us, uh, we got this uh, lovely place uh, where to live uh, or actually where I used to live. Daniel, when, um, when you did uh, move to the UK, you were an electrician. So how this transition happen from uh, being a electrician and now being a cinematographer? Uh, I guess the pain of learning something new uh, was less than the pain of staying in something that I didn't like. Uh, okay. it's, like it's like exercise, you know, like the, the pain of um, doing the exercise is less than the pain of the not doing the exercise, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah. you take the the lesser crap one, but um, I guess I just was a bit, you know, winters being an electrician here with no walls on the buildings and just freezing and health and safety here um, in the UK is terrible compared to Australia. I mean, Australia, I couldn't even drive a car. With, uh, I couldn't even drive my work vehicle without, uh, outside of work hours um, without, okay. Uh, filling in paperwork. So if I was on call to fix something, um, it'd be like, oh, I have to do a risk assessment. Am I fit to drive? Have I, you know, am I have had, had enough sleep, etc. Like, you know, it's super safe. I think in the UK in two years, I had more electric shocks um, <laughs> in two years than I had in 10 years in, in Australia. I mean, I, I, can, wow. I, think I've, I think I've had three electric shocks in, in Australia and in the UK just once a month, someone would turn something on or that, you know, put God. water everywhere. And I'm not, you know, stereotyping, but a lot of the <laughs> Eastern Europeans um, don't have a high regard for safety, yeah. at least the ones that I encountered. And I'm sure there's, you know, you know plenty yeah, of yeah. them that, that do. But, you know, you're sitting there with a, you know, I remember this one um, Polish guy, Camille, he they had a, a, you know, like the nine inch angle grinder with a diamond blade on it, like the big, okay. cut, he okay. was cutting a, cutting a brick. And I said, Camille, you know, put some safety glasses on. Uh, he's like, oh, but uh, they fog up and I can't see anything um, if I put the goggles on. I was like, well, you're not going to be able to see anything if you're blind from like all this stuff. And he was like, don't care. Um, I said, you know, at least put like ear earmuffs on so you protect your ears. He's like, oh, no, I don't want to hear my wife when I get older anyway. I was like, that is verbatim, mate. Like that is that I was just like, what a horrible way to live. But um so I just got a bit sick of doing the electrical stuff. And then um, I was out one night, um, a mutual friend from Australia. I, I loosely knew this um, woman's husband from Australia. And then I saw her at a curry night and I had a few drinks. I was like, hey, you know, and I saw that she worked at this production company near to where I was in, in London. And I said, oh, you know, if you don't need help carrying bags or something, I, I think I said something misogynistic, like, like you know, <laughs> in, insinuating that a woman can't carry her own bags, but it was more like, "Hey, if there's anything I can do, just to come out and get some experience, yeah. you know." Not, not uh, uh, it always, it always happened to me as well without even realizing it. Like, uh, 
Yeah, like I wasn't wasn't intentionally trying to be misogynistic, Sarah. Um, it was more just like, um, <laughs> you know, if I can be of assistance and make your day easier with me getting some experience, I'd love to do that. Um, anyway, I got an edit trial um, with this guy, um, Stu, uh, my boss that ended up being my boss for a long time. And I guess I guess I just um, hounded him every other week, just like, hey, got any work on any edits I can do and this sort of stuff. And he eventually caved. And um, I guess the pivotal point was I went uh like he offered me a couple um salaries which were you know like very low like not affordable compared to being electricians so, okay. so i had to say no and i was like a bit bummed about it and um hannah was just like you know just wait you know this might not be the job for you and then eventually i negotiated to because because i was um self-employed with the electrical work i could i, I sort of negotiated okay. to do two days a week at the studio and then three days a week do a week doing electrical stuff so monday tuesday in the studio Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, doing electrical work, which was great because I was getting really angry at my boss um, at the electrical okay. stuff at the time. I was just, I didn't want to be there. But in three days, you don't get as angry after three days as you do five days. So it worked really well. And then I guess late 2018, uh, so all of 2018, I'd kind of been doing this, you know, part-time thing. And then this, this split work and then end of 2018, I think it was November, uh, Stu called me, he said, Hey, some old contact of mine um, wants to have a meeting with another guy from in, in East Timor um, about a documentary they want to film about blue whales. They need somebody that can film underwater and free dive because you can't scuba with whales. And I was like, well, I wonder who that could be. Um, so I said, yeah, I'll go to lunch. So I, um, I, uh, I, I went to this lunch. I, I, I told my electrical boss, I said, uh, I'm taking the day off because I'm going to go do this lunch. And he wasn't very happy about that because um, uh, it was one of the, you know, Thursday and yeah. had this lunch and um, they said, yeah, yeah, cool. And then I think that was a Thursday. And then on Monday, um, they were like, cool. So I went round to Ocean Leisure. I don't know if you remember this store in, in Embankment. It was a scuba store. I don't know if you ever went there. There was some mm, dive gear there. No, uh, kind of like if, you know, if you're a, a Londoner and you, you know, you've got loads of money and you want to go to the Maldives and, Get all your scuba okay. stuff you know you'd go there anyway went there um with a work credit card spent five and a half thousand pounds on an underwater camera setup and got on a flight tuesday morning uh for a month to east timor uh, timor lest and okay. spent there 28 days filming underwater in paradise really um and then that's like from the, when when you did get into the job it was like a one-off job or it actually no, it, a bigger contract yeah, so it was a one-off job, and um, Stu said, you know, like I'll be, you know, pay you day rate to go there and that sort of stuff. So I went, and then I said, if I go to this, Stu, I'm going to have to quit my electrical job because I'm, you know, they're not going to have me back because I'm going to really piss yeah. some people off. I'm going to suddenly I'm going to go, I quit, sort of thing, you know. And that, you know, I'm self-employed, but you know, you st I, I still work for the same. Yeah, people. yeah, um, yeah. You know, to go on this one, I'm like, when am I ever going to get an opportunity to get paid to go for a month to, you know, East Timor and go film some stuff? And so I said. To my boss said i'm really sorry uh but i gotta go do this and he's like absolutely you gotta go do this so he was really good about it um i just said look um if if there's work for me when i come back in january would love to continue if not i totally understand that you have to fill those shoes um and then i think i said to uh stew my video boss i said um look i need a full-time job at a decent rate like a proper salary um after this and he's like yeah cool um so i did that and i you know did it, I did it. that was a, some sort of a test or you know let's see I, we'll... I don't know if it was a test but it was um it was just more like a okay you know that i put a fair bit of skin in the game here um and i think i was proving myself more and more over that year you know after being there for Good. a year um that you know i was probably worth more than you know paying like a an intern's wage sort of thing so um yeah i got that job and then i you know i did a couple you know, more weeks with the electrical stuff just to see a few jobs finished. And then I was full time doing that. But yeah, basically learned all my camera skills and that sort of stuff just from making my own YouTube videos and obsessively cool. wanting to get better. And so yeah, I went to the University of YouTube for um, making videos. I've everything's just, yeah, learned that way. I haven't gone to any who had, uh, who had um, um, the most like influence? Uh, in you when uh, you were going through this kind of process as so a career life and editing like did you follow somebody specifically to learn uh, stuff uh, 
Uh, on YouTube, I, I think I followed a lot of Peter McKinnon when he was earlier okay. on um, in his YouTube career. He's, he's gone a bit sort of Canadian cowboy now and a bit, I don't know, maybe narcissistic about his film photography photography and stuff. But he, you know, he did a lot of tutorials and there was a few okay. guys on YouTube doing that. Uh, but in a personal level, um, once I worked at that, this production company, uh, there was another Australian guy, um, Alex uh, Ditsas, who's oddly the shortest Greek last name I've ever heard in my life, Ditsas. <laughs> um, yeah, absolute legend of a, of a man. And, you know, he, he could, a, anything he touches, it just looks amazing. And it's really annoying because you're like, why, why doesn't my stuff look like your stuff? Like anything he shoots just looks. Yeah. Well, in terms of uh, quality or like just scene the, itself? Ah, the, the lighting, the quality, like the frames that he chooses, you know, the movements he uses. It's just, he's, he's very talented, got a gift and, um, you know, he has loads of experience as well. Um, but just, okay. and so when I worked with him, um, you know, we got on really well together. So I'm kind of, you know. Um, okay. Uh, what well, what have you been uh, what kind of projects did you do recently just to give me a reference of uh, what market you're working in I, I i'll do anything um but say like the last year i found myself doing a lot of uh television news releases which is a bit strange but very profitable so um, okay i've done some stuff for basically say say like fifa um outside of actual football story so not covering you know games and that sort of stuff so the, the social okay. aspect of football or you know the programs that they do there um so i went to morocco last year for a couple of weeks filming their clubs world cup but it was all about okay. not to do with the football as such but you know uh volunteers at, 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 the, at the matches or you know okay. fans and their experiences and you know the social impact that they're having in that's cool area. so yeah it was um quite cool you know get to see some um cool people i mean i didn't um uh, would you know who Arsene Wegner is? Mm, I'm not a big fan of uh, oh, football. Are no. oh, you Italian? Okay, anyway, no, I didn't know who he was. Apparently, um, he's a, he's a big deal. If anyone's a football fan, they're like, how do you not know that he was like you know, Arsenal manager for a long time and did some filming with him? And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Who's this guy? I mean, another one I did. Uh, I went to uh, Amsterdam to the Heineken Brewery. They said, oh, it's just a couple interviews, you know, like an interview with a guy, and, you know, some cutaways. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Anyway, it was a Red Bull and Heineken F1 uh, collaboration with Max okay. Verstappen. Wow. Um, and I had no idea who Max Verstappen was. Apparently, he's worth Same. like uh, he's like worth a quarter of a billion dollars. He's like the mm. he's like the bad boy of F1 sort of thing that's killing wow. it. Sort of okay. thing. Um, anyway, like just that, that sort of stuff. Okay, um, so feel like uh, for the the, the sport you mentioned, like uh, and, and obviously like uh, this is like the word going around. This it sounds like there's money in these uh, kind of uh, markets. Would you say? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and so that sort of stuff goes then gets pushed out to news channels. So it's it's kind of like subtle marketing, so that they go, okay. oh, this is news that Max Verstappen has signed with, um, you know. Uh, Heineken, which is yeah. obviously, you know, that is a legitimate thing, but obviously they want to have their branding out there and that sort of stuff. So yeah, there's subtle yeah, yeah, yeah. balance between it. But other than that, you know, I do a lot of corporate stuff. Um, okay. Um, and then I've done the odd sort of adventure stuff, which um, I, you know, like to do more of, like I've done some, yeah. uh, some fishing shows and um, some other bits and pieces. So literally kind of uh, a bit of everything. Uh, and so because of this experience, uh, um, uh, okay, it's a big market. There are all big markets. Uh, there's a lot of money in it. But what if I compare this type of experience with the spear fishing world and community and companies? Um, with your experience and uh, with your way of making videos, there are like, uh, my personal opinion, a great uh, product where you can potentially advertise products or potentially even do like the same um, the video um, editor and video maker work for um, for this company. Why this uh, isn't happening in our community? What's your vision on it? Spearfishing companies don't spend money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> on, 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 on advertising. The only company that I, I know of that will actually put out uh, that has a, you know, people have marketing budgets, but I think this very uh, old school mentality of we just give divers gear and they do the advertising for us. Um, I don't think it's necessarily that. I mean, it, is, it must be effective for some people, but, um, you know, like you see, uh, okay, well, we, we can say, you know, the I used to, uh, I, did, I did the brand film in 2022 for Omer and they were yep. still with Aqualung and then, you know, as we know, 2023, yep, yep. Aqualung got into financial trouble. So Omer's kind of not really, they're just selling out stock. They're not 
creating yeah. more products. You know, uh, the guy that I uh, worked with there, you know, they basically said, well, uh, you don't have a job on Friday, uh, sorry, uh, which is really crazy because, you know, I, I've seen you with, a, you know, a few OMA products here and there, you know, like it's it's an iconic brand. I, I'm, I'm sure yeah. well, there's, you know, anybody out there that's been spearfishing for any amount of time has used an OMA product and it's kind of yeah. sad to see. But they actually did have marketing budgets for their athletes. You know, they would actually pay cash um, and, you know, you'd see um, – you know, uh, Francesco Senna, um, yeah. Oscar Cervantes, um, uh, Dylos, uh, don't know how to pronounce Dylos, his last name is from the Canary Islands, but you know, they had these, these athletes and, um, you know, they, you know, they contracted to make a certain amount of content, but, yeah. um, I think it's very rare. I mean, I've had uh, a lot of offers over, over time and most of the time people just go, Hey, I want to give you some equipment and you use it all the time and make heaps of videos and heaps of content for me. And I'm just like, Hey, hang on a second. Mm. Um, you know, like say one, you know, if, if you give me a spear gun that costs, you know, retails for 200 euros, it might cost you 80 euros. So, you know, you're getting more than double the value for what I perceive as, as value yeah. of a video. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. And, and you also get people that are very silly that go, I mean, I had this one company, this was hilarious on Instagram. And I'm not trying to say, you know, like I, you know, I deserve to be paid for anything I do. I'm just, you know, I almost well, prefer to, I prefer to remain slightly um, uh, unattached uh, to companies financially because I feel it um, can make me a little bit more authentic. Um, for instance, yeah, with yeah. Um, Polo Sub, everybody knows I've, I've got a relationship with Giuliano. And the only relationship I have with Giuliano is, a handshake yeah. it's just a verbal uh, agreement no money exchanges hands but he said you know if you need a wetsuit for anything it's yours which is great and he doesn't say you know you have to make videos he's just like yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really happy to support you um and we're great friends as well which which i really like because i can honestly you know i i haven't worn a different wetsuit since i got what i bought my first one in 2012 they, they fit me they work for me i know they don't work for everyone some people think that other wetsuits are better and and that's great if another wetsuit works yeah. better for you that's cheaper wear it you know like brilliant i mean but i'm in a fortunate position where why would i use anything else if i can yeah. if i don't have to pay for them so um I, I prefer to have this kind of relationship um but I, I remember this one company on instagram uh they said oh hey where we make fishing shirts you know these very popular shirts that people wear fishing and they got logos on them and you know yeah, they yeah, got yeah. the hood and all this he said we've got this fishing shirt it's amazing we're just starting out um here's a discount code to buy our product. Um, what we would like is, you know, like five Instagram reels and 20 <laughs> photos. Uh, and I thought, am I reading this right? Um, yeah. yeah. So, so I wrote back, I said, um, you know, not to be like unappreciative of, you know, you're approaching me and I appreciate that, but asking me to buy a product at a discounted rate and then make you content is like, I'm paying you to do work. Like, <laughs> I said, so that I oh, will take that feedback into consideration. I was like, what is wrong with you people? Like, will this ever change? Uh, I, th I think they, I think this may change for, um, uh, it's gonna, I th from my limited understanding of the European market, I think a lot of, um, sponsorship of, of, as such of, of divers tends to be, um, you know, top athletes um, because they get seen in the competition scene. But I think a lot of attitude is drifting away from um, the competition scene as such. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go, uh, who is, um, uh, okay, okay, easy example. If I go, okay, who's, uh, if you ask anyone in Australia who is Oscar Cervantes, they'll be like, I don't know. They're like, okay, who's, who's Daniel Mello? Oh yeah, this guy, you know, great. Like that guy is, you know, like I'm, I'm down here and I don't even have long enough arms to show how much of a higher level of a spearfisher and way more talented uh, and accomplished he is than me. But um, the thing is, I, I think this shift is, you know, yes, Oscar, amazing diver. One of the, you know, probably like the top five divers in the world um, at the moment, just incredible. But does his achievements in competitions, which is his big focus, sell products necessarily? Because, um, you know, he's just gone to C4. Very um, accurate, yeah. Yeah. And I think maybe the shift could be, you know, people with a social media presence that people watch uh, is is more useful. And then um, 
I remember having a conversation with my dad very early on about um, my YouTube videos, maybe like six or seven years ago. And I said, oh, dad, it's, it's so strange. If I miss a fish or don't get anything, people seem to love that more than when I have success. And he said to me, it's the relatability. Um, he said for him, um, yeah, he can watch, you know, Demola go pull a white grouper out of a hole at 50 meters. It's incredible. We all know that. But for me, and I, I imagine maybe 90% of the people spearfishing, it's not that relatable. It's kind of like, yeah. you know, I, li I like snowboarding. But if I watch the Red Bull free ride, you know, where they're doing, you know, 10 backflips off the side of a mountain, I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But like, it's not something that I think I will mm -hmm. ever be um, able to do or relate to. And um, uh, we were talking about this Brighton video that I did with the, you know, the bass and the mullet. And I was, you know, anyone could do it. I think that's why it was popular because like I took a train. I didn't have a car. I took a train. I got down there. I shot some mullet. Um, you know, I, I learned a little bit and I, I shot a nice bass. And I think people maybe relate to that more uh, because they go, oh, that's attainable. That's something I can do. Um, you yeah. know, whereas, whereas I see, you know, um, these people, you know, dive, you know, I saw the, is it the Seminar Masters, Palma de Mallorca? I see the people there, everyone's fishing 40 to 50 meters. And I'm like, right, it's never going to happen for me. Uh, well, not at least not in the foreseeable future. Um, so like maybe um, that doesn't necessarily, that's not where with, with social media, you know, um, there's more of a spotlight on people that are doing, I guess, ordinary things, um, not yeah. extraordinary. And people might relate to that a little bit more. Um, Why they don't get it? Like, uh, uh, well, I don't, I, I don't know. I'm not saying it's the right way, but I just think that. Well, I'm, it's today's yeah. way, I, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is today's way. I guess, you know, like you don't have to be the best spearfisher to represent a brand. I mean, Giuliano has always said to me, he, he loves it, um, loves having a few photos of a small, nice, modest catch. He's like, you have a photo of one, you know, Cefalo. Brilliant, because that's what most people are going out to do, just to catch one fish, and they go, "Cool, I like that. That's that's relatable." So, I mean, that's that's my take on it. And you know, I'm not. I'm let me be very clear. I'm not trying to take anything away from these, you know, top athletes, no. but but they are at such a high level. It's um, it's you know, it it's so, so unattainable for for a lot of yeah, people yeah. that that yeah. it might they yeah. From a communicational point of view, it's, um, well, maybe they want to, I, I don't know, been thinking so often about what they're trying to communicate, what are they trying to tell us by doing what we're talking about. Uh, and uh, I never get like a, a a right answer, I would say. I, I, th uh, I think the messaging is clear. If, if it's good enough for a world champion, it's good enough for you. And, and uh, you aspire uh, maybe to be one, no? like uh, you, you know, yeah, to improve yourself, like uh, look at what he's wearing. Fair enough, uh, different ways of, uh, you know, communicating products. Uh, I really hope that at some stage, uh, I think it kind of is already happening, um, the, the transition, uh, you know, for, for companies to start investing more uh, into, into the online world. Uh, for instance, um, recently I've been in touch with uh, the only kind of... Um, magazine a paper magazine uh, we got in italy which is established since like 50 plus years talking about um, a kind of um, you know doing some sort of collaboration uh, to take uh, the podcast uh, on, on paper and do stuff like that and um, and we were talking about uh, advertising as well and um, you know i kind of uh, talk openly about it the amount of money they were asking for advertisement was like uh, on a yearly basis uh, for a magazine that was uh, um, was able to actually cover the entire European fishing community in uh, advertisement on Instagram uh, for like a page. I'm like, hey, uh, good morning, buongiorno, you're in a different world. And, yeah. Uh, kind of... Uh, uh, I, uh, the interesting thing about, about the entire community. Interesting thing about magazines, actually, I um, uh, used to... So this magazine I work for in Australia, and I'm, I'm sure it's probably very similar, but say they printed 8,000 magazines, uh, 2,000 ended up in the hands of people. Um, 6, 000, I think it was like 70% come back and then either get, you know, recycled or something like that. So you say they go, oh, we we, uh, we print, you know, 20,000 magazines. You might only get that into the hand of 4,000 people. And then so you go 4,000 people, 
you know, marketing to them and the product might only be for half of them. So you've got 2000 people and, um, you know, you can reach 2000 people on an Instagram post pretty quickly yeah. if, you know, if you, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's, that you, you're done. Yeah, yeah. Things are, things have definitely changed. There's obviously like, you know, certain people that still like magazines and newspapers yeah. and that sort of thing. But, um, I guess also those people, uh, of an older generation are probably ones that, um, are also more set in their ways and not buying as many things. They go, this is yeah. what I use. That's all I'm using. I've used this for 20 years. I'm using this spear gun and I'm not buying you spear gun. So if you, whatever, uh, a bit different yeah. advertising and podcast, but yeah. yeah, it's a strange thing. And then also like not, uh, you know, uh, for me uh, making videos, I do, you know, do it professionally to, you know, feed myself. And then, so, you know, to get someone, maybe it's just me in my position, but they say, oh, you know, can you, we'll give you some products and you make us a really nice video. And I'm like, okay. You know, like, this like, is if, offensive. This is offensive. That's I mean, I, yeah. I mean, it's just, I, I wouldn't say it's offensive, but I just think, well, they don't recognize uh, the, 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 the job, the, like the, the, the value. actual career and the yeah, value. Yeah. So it's a tough one sometimes. And I, you know, I, I say no, 99 times out of a hundred, to be honest, um, unless, unless it's, um, you know, you get a lot of free reign over what the content you make. I mean, you know, I haven't really done a lot of gear reviews. I've, there is one coming up. I've, you know, done a little, um, you know, ag arrangement with a, with a company, um, that you may see coming up. Well, let's just say pathos. Uh, I'm going to make some, um, cool. I'm going to make some content and I'm also interested in trying out one of their spear guns. Uh, but I said, good, but I said, I'm not interested in trying out wetsuits because I've, I've got that, you know, I'm, if you want to send me a, a gun, I'll happily try it out. And, um, you that's know, cool. Yeah. That's cool. So, I can but, move, uh, a little bit of things. Yeah. But I don't also want to turn into a spear fishing YouTube channel that reviews every spear gun under the sun, yeah. because, yeah. um, as you know, you get comfortable with a spear gun. I don't like change. Um, I, yeah. I like how I, I want to be able to close my eyes and reload my spear gun and know where everything is. You know, I don't yeah. want to have to think, um, which I do with my guns. So I was very hesitant to do this, um, uh, with pathos, but I thought, ah, oh, well, you know, like they've got a, a new mechanism that I'm interested in looking at. There's a new, um, muzzle, um, that may solve some of the problems that are on my existing spear gun. So, you know, it's an interest, it, it's mutually beneficial, but when someone comes out and just, I don't know, like, I forgot who it was, um. I don't want to throw too many people under the bus, but you know, you say if like, um, you know, a company comes and says, Oh, you know, we want your head to toe and we'll just give you gear. Um, but you need yeah. to post this much and that much. I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, I've, I did a job for, uh, a company, uh, I can't probably won't say the company, but they're, they're sponsoring the euros, uh, okay. the European championship next year. And they wanted to do some stuff on the street, uh, like a TikTok style video of, you know, yeah. uh, you know, who's sponsoring the euros or, you know, who's, you know, France's yeah. biggest goal scorer. They had a, a mashup video from Paris, Madrid, and London that I, you know, I shot the London one, um, like vertical video. And and like, I, and they, they changed their mind and we had to go reshoot and they did re-edits and they had like editing from Paris and Madrid and they had to get translators and all this sort of stuff. I think they must've spent like 20,000 pounds on a TikTok video. For one like wow. TikTok video, I'm like, nah, nah, like, God. You know what I mean? And so like, they've got so many, but they'll go to a big agency and obviously the agency's got to make money. Then they're, I'm, they're paying me to do oh. what I do. And so I think, you know, in the, in the real world of this marketing, you know, when you see like, you know, you'll see on your, you know, your, your Instagram or, or YouTube feeds is like an advertisement for say, I don't know, let's just say like, you know, Zara or something like that. You know how much they're paying to make that content? Like they're not, they're not just throwing some clothes at some people and saying, Oh, yeah. you know, we'll give you some clothes and make me an Instagram reel. Like, you know, there, there is some sort of certain companies that are using that as a, as a, you know, a marketing yeah, yeah, method. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like they go, Oh, get ready with me sort of thing. But, um, yeah, I think knowing that there is money and marketing budgets, um, makes me wonder that, you know, if you want something high quality produced, um, maybe it's just not best to throw gear at maybe, people. Maybe it's the sustainability, the financial sustainability of, uh, of it. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not saying, you know, like, you know, well, I, I don't know the financials of the things, but let's just say, uh, you know, I don't think, you know, I don't think Pathos is going to spend 20,000 euros on a TikTok video. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's yeah. horses for courses, et cetera, like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
and you know or you know I, i'm certainly not going to spend that much money. no one's going to it's it's different markets and this sort of stuff you're talking about someone that's you know sponsoring millions and tens of yeah, millions. yeah 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 uh, okay but, and, and in regard of this uh, daniel uh, the, what we what we're saying is that okay this is a challenging uh, kind of uh, um situation for this proficient community because uh, if it does i believe that if it doesn't exist uh, online uh, it, it will not exist in reality yeah. at some stage uh, that's like a silly thought and so how do you see the um, um, content creation about spear fishing in terms of communication for, for for the community and for the world out there because uh, one of my intrusive thoughts was that if the big companies do not invest in content in good content that goes out there and reach uh, a lot of people yeah um what's your way of communicating spear fishing and uh, how can these uh, improve this situation what would you focus on uh, I think less direct marketing is probably um, more effective. Uh, okay. I mean, I, I think I've got 170 videos on YouTube, um, all in a polo sub wetsuit. I think I've mentioned it in three videos, one about, you know, what's in my dive bag to, you know, specifically about what I'm using and then maybe another time when i've been in norway like hey i've got an like because it's an extreme thing and it's relevant to the video saying hey i've got a nine and a half mil jacket on um you know it's really bulky um i got this custom made because i wanted it to fit well from yeah. obviously um i think that sort of uh subtle more subtle marketing instead of you know when you see some something that's clearly an advertisement for yeah. um something i i I'm, i remember an old mentor said you know the best advertising um that the best spearfishers in Australia, they never talk about what they wear. They just wear it or they just use it and then people observe it. And I think that has a lot more um, power. I mean, like my, my dive R fins, um, I use them all the time and they're in every video, but pff, I never mention them. It's just, it's just yeah. is what it is. And I, and I, and I think, you know, I've talked to Ray and, you know, he's like, you know, I, you know, I don't want a big sort of like, um, Hey, buy this product to watch. Yeah, you know, like a every video, you know, sometimes is a bit like, um, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you, sometimes you see True. YouTube videos and they're like, oh, and I'm using, you know, this from this and get my disc. I, I, I don't know. I just don't really like it. And I think people can see through um, that it's not very authentic. And I think maybe what is more effective is just using the products in a way um, that people can relate to. I mean, I've had a load of messages because uh, some of the videos I've made recently, I've had that little 60 centimeter Omer gun and I've had so many people say, what's that little gun you're using? That's so cool. You know, where can I get one? And I've, I've just said, I don't, I don't, I don't say. My fucking orca. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have, lot, I have lots of people, um, you know, message me about that. And, you know, I do mention my orca gun sometimes because it's an unusual looking spear gun. Um, and I use it for a very specific purpose. It's not for everything. Um, but I also mentioned that I'm like using my, 90 centimeter meandros you know it's just yeah. it, it's not sort of every fish i'm like you know i'm not going oh thanks to orca for allowing me to shoot <laughs> this this fish with this gun or whatever uh, but that would work that would potentially increase the yeah sales, you know? yeah may, maybe it would but is it is it authentic and is it um effective can it I, not be can it not be i don't think it could be too much um you see um yeah, I'm just trying to think of any specific sort of. No, I don't really want to throw. Well, like Peter either, McKinnon but... videos, so he always mentions, for instance, something about. Uh, yeah, He's always got a sponsor on the video, which is kind yeah. of different to like a product using. But you know when. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, who would we say? You know, like. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's just. Who would I? Who I would get it. Be? It's like a um, kind of detaching from the audience uh, in a way, like taking distance, pulling you out of the out of the content. You know, if I make a. Yeah, that's why you want to make the video uh, like a viewer would think like this is the only scope we're actually in your videos um you only go look we're actually in your videos it's more for instance about the experience itself uh, yeah but, i think i think it's a hard it's a, yeah it's, it's about the spearfishing experience but it's also hard to um hard to balance that because if i'm saying you know people need to be paid then they obviously have to get advertisement returns on that sort of thing so maybe it's more of like a longer term collaboration but um you know like things like i don't um yeah you know, when we went 
spearfishing in uh, in in Sicily, or you've got a an Oma wetsuit, or someone's got this wetsuit. Like I'm not gonna you know not film you or get in shot because you've got an Oma <laughs> wetsuit. You know, like some people were like, oh, you know, like you don't want to. Yeah. Some people go, oh, you know, don't, don't do that, don't do that. Oh, you know, or you know, they hold up a different gun when they shoot something or, or whatever. You know, I just so I I really um I really don't like it, and I, I you know I find it easy to see through, and I think a lot of people as well find it easy to to see through yeah um so maybe that's okay okay i love this type of uh, conversation it's um well i think that this is what the kind of uh, industry needs uh, to a little bit wider what's um review on things what's what's your plan obviously you've got um you, you know your, your plan, own brand, you're, you're, you're starting up you know you well you have, you, have to, so you, you have to you have to get out there somehow but also yeah well, my my focus it's uh, I would say on entertaining people, um, and and be. We, I was talking exactly about this with Dario Dali, which is the latest podcast that came out. I think the twenty twenty number twenty one. I think episode. Um, it was like, well, you don't talk much about uh, your brand uh, on your podcast, uh, um, as well as on on the videos. Uh, and he's right. Uh, and I mentioned exactly what we've been talking about that I want to that come up uh, as a second thing rather than me being here to sell you this stuff. I take some time to do my kind of product placement uh, because uh, of course, yeah. we, we figure out that drive sales. Um, uh, but my goal uh, um, about it, it's, uh, you know, keeping your attention on. We, we are so distracted every time we take the phone. We, we kind of, uh, I like to think, are competing with, I don't know, Mr. Beast, uh, Michelle Obama, everyone on, on our phone, for instance. And, uh, and so I'll try to keep up the quality uh, as I can. Uh, in terms of yeah. content uh, and for what I'm able to to create uh, and and the post uh, the the podcast is such a cool thing I really love it. The goal is so be here, and uh, I will be here. Uh, I've been uh, I've been there. Uh, you know, just uh, keep up uh, with what we're doing and yeah. and, and, and open and working to increase the sales. Um, when um, when you mention uh, that you know kind of this uh, transition happened and. Um, you know, you've been doing so many works. Uh, you've been working for so many big projects. Uh, how does that in impact your life uh, compared to you when you were an electrician? Like, uh, I don't know. What's your daily routine? What was your daily routine back then? And uh, uh, which one? Da daily routine as, a as an electrician is get to site at 8 o'clock and just wait for 4 o'clock to come around and go home. Okay. Um, and when I was doing that, I would generally come home, get home at 5 o'clock, um, I would go by the supermarket on the way home, get the stuff for dinner, and then I would furiously edit while trying to cook uh, for when Hannah got home. Because um, I'm, I'm the cook in the in the relationship. I think yeah. this is normal, and she finishes later. You know, she'd get home at seven thirty, so it, it makes no sense for her to cook yeah. because yeah. you know yeah. you eat dinner at eight thirty. Then, so uh, yeah. yeah, I would just come home and yeah, I'll just edit as fast as I could for making YouTube videos because having a full-time job and then doing YouTube videos as well is, um, is tough. Um, and then now, um, now that I'm a freelancer, um, I have a lot of spare time. Um, you know, you know, the jobs that is less jobs, but they're more profitable. Um, you know, it's feast or famine as, as they say. Okay. So, um, but you know, I'm, I'm traveling. So a lot of my work tends to be abroad. So like 50% of it, I would say I'm, I'm traveling. I mean, last year, uh i think i was in 20 different countries <laughs> um okay. which, which is, it's, it's just a lot um you know and that takes a toll on the you know personal relationship as well because you know i'm away for three three days at a time yeah, yeah but um it also allows me to be flexible with uh you know if i'm doing because i also edit as well uh, as well as, as shoot but you know allows me to do a lot of diving so last summer in the uk i dived quite a bit uh, which was really nice uh, during the week as well so i don't have to go out on the weekends I've kind of become the opposite. I don't. Uh, I don't. Okay. Dive in the it weekend. was a good choice. It was a good choice. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good, it's a good choice. But you know, it's it's difficult at times because you know you're always worried about where your next meal is coming from. You know, you can't you can't eat air. <laughs> um, okay, fair enough. Fair so, enough. Um, and so this, uh, I, I would say, like uh, impacted your life uh, in good way. Um, yeah. Would you say you achieved what you were looking for? <sighs> 
I probably don't have enough regular clients that um, I'm probably only saying this because it's January and February and it's, it's very okay. it's typically slow in the industry, you know, like last summer, us, you know, every, I think it was about eight weeks where every week I was away somewhere uh, shooting something. So, you know, it does get busy and, you know, um, you work hard when you do, do work, but it's, um, yeah, it's good. I mean, it allows me time to, you know, do podcasts, et cetera. Um, okay. And then also, you know, dive, dive when I, um, when the weather's good, I can structure things around. It doesn't always work. Um, but that's always, always nice. Um, okay. Yeah. And, uh, that, and, and where would you position it to what you did on uh, YouTube, uh, in your, uh, career path? Uh, pff, yeah, slightly fallen out of love with YouTube a little bit. Um, Ooh, yeah, okay. yeah. I, I think I, I think I got a little bit too hung up on the dream of, you know, it being, you know, primary income and, you know, living on a beach somewhere and making YouTube videos. Okay. And I, I don't think it's quite realistic. Uh, well, at least not for me. And, it, you know, it works for some people, but I also, um, I put in a lot of effort. Like at some it, stage, uh, well, well, you're talking about big dreams. So back then probably you gave a different value to it. Yeah. Uh, oh no. I mean, I, I last, last two years, I've been very consistent and I think the videos are probably better than I've ever made as far as value and, you know, broad locations and that sort of stuff. And, you know, maybe spearfishing isn't as popular or, um, you know, just, you know, things go in and out of fashion. So maybe, maybe it's that, okay. uh, and, okay. you know, short form content has really taken a lot of people's attention. I don't particularly enjoy short form content making it. And I, um, yeah, I think I've had to have a, a few honest conversations uh, with myself about YouTube. And then, you know, I really, end of last year, I think I was like, I just got to throw more videos at it. And I, um, I did this big trip last year where I drove from London to Turkey and di dived along the way. And I also did a lot of diving elsewhere last year as well. So I had all this content I thought was, you know, really cool diving new locations. Uh, you know, I, I did a video every week for like six weeks before Christmas and uh, every video got less and less views. And then, you know, I was like, no, stuff this, I'm, I'm done. But um, I've kind of just realized that for me, oversaturating it doesn't work. Um, and I know that in my own viewing habits, when I watch a YouTube video, uh, there's this one channel uh, I watch that does cinematography breakdowns and uh, he would post a video maybe every two months and you'd be like, yes, he's posted a video and you'd watch it. And I'd watch the whole thing, it'd be great. But he's started posting like every three days. And I'm like, too much content. I, I don't watch any of it now. Um, so I kind of figured, uh, one, it wasn't effective for my particular audience, I mean, you know, for other people it might be. Uh, but also I was getting very resentful about making YouTube videos. I was probably rushing them to try and, you know, work, okay. trying to work, trying to get a Keep YouTube video every, time, every yeah. week. And so now I'm just trying to, I've realized, look, it might be a season that doesn't make a lot of financial sense, but I like doing it from a personal perspective and sharing my adventures. And I'm just going to go at a pace that uh, doesn't stress me out. Um, you know, that might be okay. every two, two or three weeks. Um, and... It does take a lot of effort uh, to keep up with these. Yeah, I think, I mean, last year, I think I did 26 videos, which is a week, every a video every two weeks, which is quite a lot. Um, it doesn't sound like a so lot. So you basically had this uh, kind of a photo when you when you started the drive to start like in a in a different way to be more consistent and everything. And um, as a as a, as a fan, as a subscriber, uh, and as a person that loves your video, um, I, I, I've seen you you experience a, a big growth in your channel. How did that feel? Uh, I think there was a big growth during COVID. Uh, because I think I was making videos, um, you know, a lot of people stuck indoors as well, but also got me to think outside of the box because if I couldn't go spearfishing, I had to still make videos because one, I also had a lot of time because I was on furlough as well. So I'm like, I'm going to go crazy if I don't yeah. do something. And um, so that was um, you know, good creatively. And I think maybe off the back of that, um, yeah, maybe people are just not watching as much. Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I think I think I've just sort of really changed the way that I think about it as you know a, okay. a money making tool. Um, I mean, it's never been um, a, a full time wage for me. Like anyone out there thinking okay. that I you know make you know tens of thousands, you know, there's nothing like that uh, for me. Um, 
Well, you know, it's important it's, to talk, uh, I reckon, about these things because they're such a big uh, part of uh, our culture, I'd say. Um, yeah, I mean, like some people like, oh, you know, you'd you make, you know, you know, 10 grand a month. And I was like, if bloody only, if I make 10 grand a year, I'd be, you know, I'm like, great, lovely. Um, but I mean, the amount of effort I put, so if I make 26 videos, if I made 26 client videos, um, during the year and maybe i've also had this internal battle as like do i just stop putting energy into youtube and put it into you know more clients more corporate work and that sort yeah, of stuff yeah. and you know at the end of the day you have to make money um to live True, but daniel so. let me stop you don't do that <laughs> uh, uh, mainly because uh, i i always uh, think about you in a specific uh, um in a specific way we were um boating back to castellamara and uh, I think Anna was uh, on, uh, on over, was it you? Maybe Anna was, uh, I don't know the proper name, like on the tip of the boat at the, the front. Bow. The bow. The bow, okay. And then you were slightly on the left, on the left with your camera in your hands. Uh, you were saying, uh, you were telling me that basically you were going kind of, uh, you were trying to go full time on, on, on YouTube. That was a plan. And, uh, and, that, and that scene, uh, blue water sun you guys there i was like uh, wow this is very very inspiring so don't stop doing these uh, don't think about these things i told you what i think about it yeah. these, these are views okay they're important they play a big role but it's not the metric uh, to define um, in, in many different ways success and yeah uh, I, I definitely uh, think um stay positive yeah i think i got a little bit too focused on trying to you know you know like the money really and then i kind of i think turning it into that i got a bit i was just like oh it's just it, too much like a job not not enjoying it as much anymore and i yeah. definitely think i've i did that and also trying to you know make out make more videos and that it was um it was uh you know you get a bit burnt out um yeah so i think i think this year i'm just uh you know i've had massive discussions uh you know obviously with you or, or off this off this chat and i've had discussions with hannah about that i'm just going to uh Try and go a little bit back back to back to basics and just you know enjoy the process make the videos i want to make and just make them because i want to make them not because um i think it's what people are going to like um, yeah. which is probably what attracted to people to my channel in the first place so i feel like the uh the prodigal son returning returning home maybe to uh to padre but um Ooh. I don't know, I don't know, yeah prodigo where did you learn about that <laughs> Uh, figlio prodigo. Il figlio prodigo. Yeah, where did you learn it? It's just my Italian so good. Uh, <laughs> I, I used to, I used studying Italian, Daniel. Uh, a loose studying is a loose term, but I'm doing some coffee break Italian because I would like to be um, a little better. As we had the situation the other night at the club meeting, uh, I'm in a corner. For people that uh, can't visualize this, I come to a corner with four Italians speaking. I'm like, oh, hello. Uh, and so suddenly four Italians have to stop speaking Italian for the one person that speaks English. So I was like, oh, this is just, it feels very rude uh, for me to, to do this. No, no, no. Look, we have a different, as you know, you probably experience it more than me, but we define the rudeness in uh, different ways. Uh, sure, in, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what I was mean, your most shocking experience in terms of the rudeness uh, or perceived the rudeness uh, in uh, with the Italian community? In the Italian community, oh, don't want to talk about that. No, my, no, that's all right. Don't do names. So just tell me about I, the context. Uh, I had one person that um, uh, basically messaged me and um, said, "Oh, you're terrible," you know. You're fishing in the Mediterranean with that spear guy. Uh, you're never going to shoot a dentex. You're crap. You know, oh, like you, you, you're kidding and all this. And I was like, all right, mate, whatever. Uh, and then I shot a dentex in Spain and then commented on my thing. Oh, you know, it's in Spain. It doesn't count. You're still shit. No. Um, and I was just like, wow, what a knobhead. Um, so I think that was probably it. But, you know, most people, most the Italians I've um, you know, met. Well, I've, but this I've, is a, an online kind of a story. That was an hater. In, in terms of a rudeness, like, I don't know, like going to the bread shop, to the bakery, and be like, sorry, can um, I have a... The, uh, the panaria. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I've really experienced a lot of uh, rudeness. I not say please or thank you at all uh, in Italy. Like, the old sound most of the time is like, uh, you know, stricted orders. 
Yeah, I mean, where have I experienced anything like that? Oh, <laughs> well, I was in the, I was in the, the Dolomiti, and uh, which I thought, you know, Italy, great. And I, I got to the front counter, <laughs> and uh, I was like, you know, oh, buongiorno, come stai? Um, <laughs> and and the guy just turned straight back in English. He was like, yes, I know we are in Italy, but we speak German. I was like, fantastic. <laughs> I was like, okay, no worries. Um, Fine. Uh, Fantastic. Well, but yeah. I think I think I think this guy was probably more German than um Austria Austri it was more Austrian than, than, than Italian. But yeah. I just thought, okay, fine. No worries. I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm trying here. I'm I'm really trying and um yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um but, uh, so plans for the twenty twenty four, uh, Daniel. Ah, okay. Um better Italian uh 2024 okay. so uh new year's resolution uh, yeah so what's that uh 20 24 uh is that how you'd say it or no you would say uh, 24 2024 uh, okay so you, you wouldn't you don't, you don't say 2024. No, no, no. We find that so stupid. Like when, 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 when 20, 2024. Okay, right. 2024. Okay, right. Okay, anyway. Uh, I guess a little bit better Italian. I have the Euro African Spearfishing Championships coming up in uh, Turkey in the end of May, which is not great for timing wise because it's the start of the, the season. So not as fit as I'd like to be. So I'm doing um, some bits underwater, you know, in the pool locally and yeah. trying to. Do other exercises which i have to do after this um which is annoying but i uh as i said earlier the pain of exercise is less than the pain of failing uh, or being unfit so I'm work doing that wise well. uh work uh yeah i don't really have massive oh yeah i'd like to there's some talks of some you know bigger tv shows to shoot and that sort of stuff but um whether they come off, who knows? Um, but yeah, I think maybe just more consistent work um, uh, would, would be nice. But also, just um, I'd, I'd really like to do well at the British Spearfishing Championships. That's that's probably my biggest one. Uh, last year, I um, I managed to win one of the heats, uh, and I got really inspired. I'm like, oh, if I can win one, you know, I can I can win another maybe. Um, and then I did lots of scouting and I was so prepared and then the competition got cancelled and, um, you know, then I did this trip last year so I couldn't I couldn't dive the last heat. So um, that was a bit disappointing. But, um, yeah, I think there's there's three good competitions. One's at a very at a spot that I, I know quite well um, at Bognor, right. um, which we're going to dive at some stage together. Um, yeah, yeah. Potentially the before the competition. Uh, <laughs> I can take you anywhere after the competition. Yeah. <laughs> Potentially before the competition, um, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, maybe just taking things a little bit more seriously because I've never, ever scouted a competition in the UK uh, before and, until okay. last year. Um, so I'm hoping to, you know, utilize my freelance time a little bit to just put more effort in and um, see yeah, if yeah. I can uh, get better results. Um, have you ever seen that uh, little, uh, I think we might have talked about it uh, during the club uh, meeting, um, the, the surface, or have you ever seen one in Italy, the surface kind of engine, if you fuel in, you pull the cord, and uh, you've never seen that? Well, like a, a scooter, a sea scooter. A sea scooter, uh, yeah. but the, the fueled one, uh, not the electric no, one. Ah, no, no, not with the fuel, no. Daniel. I'm thinking to, I used to have it um, in, in Sicily and basically you put some, um, you know, engine oil and fuel, you keep it clean and you make sure no water get into the exhaust and they have um, a fair like uh, autonomy. We're talking about uh, four hours, uh, five hours and you go basically an engine behind your legs. So people tend to uh, stay on it like that but mm. it's like it does vibrate too much uh, and uh, you don't see much because of all the bubbles uh, instead the, what a very good guy um, told me was to put it behind your legs uh, and having it pushing you yeah so use your fins uh, to kind of stabilize yourself you have a clear visual you're not feeling the vibration and you can fight currents with that uh, you can get to a two mile um spot uh, um, you can you can do this as well you've got you've got an engine behind you too christian it's the two the two legs 
with the, nah. the feet and the fins. I, I swim two miles, or maybe not two miles. Yeah, I've, I've swum. Uh, I think the good a lot. thing about this is that you get there and you're not tired and you're ready to, to smash it. Uh, the, good, the good thing about doing it the old school way is you get really fit. And you can do it and you can do what other it's people can't do. It's nice. I'm putting I'm putting the effort uh, somewhere else, right? I can't you know. there's I love I love shore diving. I think uh, you know, actually in the in the UK I haven't um I haven't been on a boat since 2021. Sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> um I haven't been on a boat since since then and I quite like the shore diving aspect. Um of it because I don't know, it just feels very it's very wholesome um I also like testing my body a little bit um you know it's definitely yeah. not not easy um some of the spots uh you know I dive two kilometers straight out to see um a lot of good mental um uh you know time to, to wrestle with your own mind as I mentioned you know really yeah. early on about um you know anxiety and stress like that that used to affect me a lot um it still does you just learn how to manage things but I um how to manage it uh, I think preparation is a big thing for me. If I, I get nervous, if I don't, if I haven't ticked all the boxes. So before I go diving, everything's either packed in the car or laid out, or I write a list of things I have to do in the morning before I walk out the door. Um, I just, otherwise I can't really relax. I don't sleep well. Um, and I think, yeah, just preparation is, is a big one for me. Um, because I'm always thinking about the next thing to do or you know yeah. if i forget something i i often forget things uh, as my wife has pointed out and rightly so i do just you know I'll, what did i do the other day i went um well, oh yeah i went to, I, I went to the pool with, with her to do some free diving and i didn't bring her weight belt i was just like oh i, I thought you just wanted the, the neck weight um and she's like no i, I used the weight belt I was like, <laughs> oh, sorry like but i, I packed all the stuff uh, i don't know i just yeah, I think I think managing stress is, uh, and that is just also you know having a plan and and also knowing when to say you're out of your depth, I guess, or you know like you're not feeling it. Today. You know, you know when you're spear fishing, there's so, you know those days when you go spear fishing and you know your sinuses are really clear, yeah. you feel good, you've had a lovely like sleep, you you know it's like four hours after you've eaten, so you've got energy, but you're not full, and everything works, and you're just like, oh, I, I can do anything today. You know, you know those. We, we yeah. I want to have more of those days, um, and so I try and I do know. things to prepare me, prepare me to do that. But I'm also, I also know that some days I, I don't feel the best. Like I had this this morning dive in in Bodrum in Turkey last uh, la last year. I was, I was like, I'm going to get up. I'm going to shoot a massive dentex. Like this is going to be amazing. Like I got up like way before the sunrise. I, I got there. I was getting in my suit and the sun wasn't even up yet. I was going to swim out to this pinnacle. Pinacolo. Pinacolo. Yes. This, uh, and uh, and I didn't sleep well the night before. I think I had like five hours sleep and stuff. And because uh, I was nervous, I'm like, oh, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to miss this thing. And oh, yeah, I'm shoot yeah, a dentex. Yeah. And yeah, I got out there. I was like, I did like a couple of warm-up dives. I was like, oh, Jeez, I, I don't feel good. So, you know, then I did a big, uh, uh, what do we say? Uh, Mare de Mare. Mare de Mare? Mare de... No, shit not... in the... In the... Mare de... Oh, oh, oh. oh no, it's... no, Mare de, shit. Mare de. Si, si. Mare, caca, caca. Caca de Mare. Caca de Mare. <laughs> uh, a, a turn in the sea, and I'm like, I feel a bit better, but I just wasn't feeling good. And I did like a couple dives. I did one dive to like 25 meters, and I was just like, you know what? Today's just not my day. Um, went a bit shallower, and then I went, I went back home, and um, you know, had a, a little sleep on the beach and that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, I think, I think, not being, I, I think I'm a little, a little less proud uh, these days about, you know, going. I'm not having, you know, I don't feel great, so I'm not going to push myself. I mean, when I was, saying, yeah, I was throwing yeah. up out the window, I was going to a um, a place called Fraser Island, which is the world's largest sand island. It's off the east coast of Australia, so it's a couple hours north of Brisbane. And so we would do stupid things like we'd leave at 10 p.m., drive four hours, and then get there at two o'clock in the morning, and then try and sleep in a tent at the boat at the boat ramp for three hours and then get in the boat and then drive a hundred kilometers in the boat and like no sleep just 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 terrible so you know i went out this day and i was just i was just broken and i got to about half you know but i'm out there i want to shoot like nice fish and 
I got out there and, you know, I, I just I just pushed through. But then eventually I got to the point where I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to die. So then I just like passed out in the boat for a couple of hours. And I was like, you know, I just need to know that, you know, you know, I had a lot more pride than I probably shouldn't have been. I should have slept beforehand or whatever, yeah, you know, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I think now that I'm a bit older, I'm like, oh, you know, if, you know, if, if I can't hit 30 meters today or I'm not feeling great straight away, that's okay. Um, you yeah, know, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't need to push myself and try and prove myself to anyone. Um, that's the right spirit. Uh, so talking yeah. uh, about Kaka, I I thought about uh, a story that I never mentioned to you, and that actually happened to to you uh, with, with you actually. Um, I remember when we went uh, spear fishing in Sicily. Again, talking about Kaka. Uh, I was extremely excited because, guys, uh, you see for the first time your YouTube star, uh, for fuck's sake, I was uh, over the moon, right? And so, of course, uh, of course, uh, when uh, something is going to happen like this to you, 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 you think about so many things. And, and most of the time uh, you have like an idea about, um, in this case, like a hero, uh, some people you're aspiring to and stuff like that. I don't know, wait, 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 because this is going to get funny. And so you got this idea, right? And we start swimming along the coast of uh, Scopello, fantastico, Calazzurra, guys, uh, amazing place. Uh, not fishy, but amazing place. Ah, uh, and uh, secondi, uh, yeah, die. okay, right, exactly. And um, well, uh, we're swimming, we're swimming by the coast, so uh, one by one, uh, we go ahead of each other to actually try to catch some fish to the point, Daniel. Uh, disappear behind the behind the tip of a rock uh and obviously like uh, I, I start you know kind of going the same direction uh, to eventually then uh, listen uh, to danny saying hey don't dive in my shit <laughs> i'm like <laughs> and i'm like uh, wait a second did he actually tell me that like because the first thing i thought was, was like oh my, look my spot Exactly. I was like, oh, look at Daddy, how, you know, angry is about me getting there. <laughs> but then no, I wasn't joking. Yeah. So, it's well, your well, island. Well, yeah, I'm like, yeah, don't come well, to my spot. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. No, 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 no. Uh, it, it was a, the fall of a hero for myself, being attacked from my ear. I was dying inside. I was like, oh, it's not my intention to then realize to then realize I was literally diving <laughs> into Dan and Swan shit uh, because uh, he had a shit on the surface uh, and uh, and then I realized <laughs> what was happening. Uh, uh, yes, so yeah, that, that was very just, funny. Right? Well, was no, funny. no, uh, no rudeness uh, intended there. Um, yeah, don't die on my shit. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, I would. I would never. I mean, uh, I've I've had it in British nationals uh, before because you know. The, British are very polite. Oh, I had one in that competition last year that I dived, and so like I was resting on my float because I was, I just absolutely hammered this spot. Um, you know, like you know, one minute, uh, one minute on the surface, one minute down, one minute on the surface for like an hour. I was, you know, pretty tired. I'm like, okay, I can feel a cramp. I'm just gonna have a rest on my float and have a drink. And then this guy came up to me. Um, he's like, oh, how's it going? I was like, yeah, yeah, good. And he, he could see my string of fish. Like, oh, you having a good time here? I was like, yeah, had a couple of fish. Um, <laughs> He's like, oh, cool. I might have a look here too. And I was just like, oh, yeah, cool. No worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but in my head, I'm just like, why am I saying? So I should be telling him to go away. Like, this is my spot. Find your own spot. Um, but, yeah, I don't think I could. Yeah. It'd, That's it'd weird. Hard. Yeah, it'd be hard for me to say, piss off, you know, like, um, off on cool. <laughs> you know, like off this. Uncool. Oh, yeah. In another area. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I, I would never say that uh, to you, especially if I was... Um, if no, I was but diving on someone's island, I can't believe you never told me that that you were uh, you were deep, no, deeply, no, no. deeply distressed no, that I uh, told you to piss off. <laughs> this is no, this it was my a, area. <laughs> uh, Daniel, it was deeper than that. It was uh, the fall of a hero uh, <laughs> itself. I experienced that, and then but like anyway. a pho like a phoenix, I rose from your ashes yeah, and, and yeah, came yeah, back yeah. out again. And um, you <laughs> and were, came out the water. <laughs> you had a what is it? Uh, what would you say? Baptisma. A bit, uh, a bit forward for the Italian community, but uh, <laughs> still, yeah, so, uh, it, still, it still works. So, something like this, yeah. Um, but you know, when you got to go, you got to go, right? True, true. That uh, luckily, um, 
no, I did experience that. Yeah, I did, I did, I did. It's such a good thing when it happens. Um, <laughs> anyway, Daniel, uh, and, and, thank and you. Enough talk about poo. And I've talked about poo. Thank you for uh, thank you for uh, staying here uh, with me today. Uh, thank you so much for joining uh, the Wolf of Spur Fishing, uh, the, the Italian podcast um, about spur fishing, uh, but mainly about uh, spear roast and uh, what's behind the scenes. So thank you for for being here. Thank you very much for having me. Ciao. Ciao.